Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ancor Insights podcast. Uh, you've got two hosts with you today and with me I have Gareth George, the Head of Industrial for Ancor Thailand. And Daniel Ball, who's our Head of Eastern Seaboard Office. Today we're going to be talking about predictions for 2022 in terms of the recruitment markets. First of all, we're going to be discussing the supply chain issues that are ongoing uh, as a result of the COVID-19 impact. First of all, supply chain issues uh, during uh, COVID-19 has seen a significant shift uh, in, in the supply chain issues and the cost of transporting products uh, within Thailand and obviously regionally as well. I think a lot of companies have tried to adapt to this by looking at localization projects. And if I was to tie this into the recruitment sector, I think that positions within supply chain, in particular for buying and planning, have have become much more prevalent. Um, so we've noticed a much higher workload sourcing for planners and for, for buyers um, as companies look at different suppliers and alternative ways of getting their materials. That's ultimately as a result of the expectation of higher costs uh, revolved around the supply chain market, the, the demand, as Dan has said, for very strong uh, planners uh, is very, very high at the minute. We've seen a, an increase so far this year in, in the supply chain jobs relating to the planners. It's also not just COVID that's caused it as well. Um, <clears throat> there's a couple of external factors which have been uh, building up for quite a long time. So a lot of the, the shipping and logistics companies have put their their ships out of service um, because it's not worth running them and there were ongoing maintenance costs so a lot of them have ended up parking ships there's also a container shortage which has driven the cost up and um, if you're like some of our clients where you're making really large significant um, machinery it's not worth inheriting that cost or passing it on to the customer so it ends up that a lot of companies I've been working with, they've been putting their finished goods into stock, not sending them out straight away. Uh, from, from a recruitment perspective within the supply chain market, the demand, as we said, for specific functions within the supply chain team is very high at the minute. And the one thing we're actually seeing is actually companies are investing more in their people. So uh, whether it be uh, training their, their staff and being a bit more flexible in, in, in the, in the people they're looking for to specifically find the people within their teams that they're looking at. In I think there's also more uh, than just supply chain issues. Um, you know, there's the great resignation which is happening in, in the UK and in America. I don't know if that's a problem that we'll be dealing with here. I'm not quite sure what the effects of that going to be. This is all our, our opinions and is obviously open to your own interpretation. Um, I was looking at the facts quite recently for the UK um, and they had 4.5 million people leaving their job in one month. It's not all in London, but the population of London is 9 million. So that's roughly half of the entire population of London in one month. Um, leaving their jobs and I think that's a couple of reasons work-life balance hybrid working change in careers people having different hobbies and interests um, during lockdown periods and I, I don't know what that would mean for Thailand what do you think Gareth? Uh, I think uh, there has been certainly a, a, an increase I believe in, in, in people moving jobs certainly in the last six months or so um, but that that actual uh, process to, to transfer jobs um, it is becoming uh, more and more challenging. A lot more people are, are getting counter offers from their current employers. We're finding, and actually, from a recruitment perspective, uh, I've seen more and more people turn offers down, not just within industrial manufacturing industry, but across IT and commercial as well. We've seen more and more candidates turning down offers to move um, as a result of, of uh, the uncertainty that's in the market. Um, but the one thing that, that as Dan mentioned, that more and more people, uh, I believe, in the last uh, one to two months, we have seen um, more and more people more open to challenges uh, and uh, moving for the right reasons, the right career opportunities, not just uh, from a financial gain perspective. Yeah, I think that obviously salary is important and it always is going to be a main motivator. Um, 
there are other considerations that people now have in mind as well. But I'm also interested to see if that goes full swing. The cost of living has been increasing. Um, you just look at fuel prices as an example and how diesel has hiked up significantly in cost in Thailand. Um, and there was also quite recently a lot of, of press in the news about the rising cost of meat and pork specifically in Thailand. So that's just a couple of examples of how the cost of living is going up here. So I think that we could end up going full circle back to people considering salary as a main motivator. Um, and one of the reasons why they'd be looking to move mostly to um, offset that increased cost. Now, I've, I've seen some companies overseas have been hiking up salaries. And there are a few LinkedIn posts where uh, senior management and companies were saying that to help their staff, they're going to increase the salaries. Normally, it's done on merit and length of time in the business, but they've um, adapted to try and make life easier for the employees they've got and because they know finding new staff is going to be really difficult. Uh, yeah, and I think building on from that in terms of the hiring process, we certainly have seen a massive change in, in uh, approaches to hiring, particularly in manufacturing, industrial sector. The more traditional approach of face-to-face -face meetings and, and, and uh, factory tours specifically with operational staff but also back office support uh, more and more companies now are much more open to doing online interviews um, again even with with skilled engineering uh, candidates and and for us in in recruitment that certainly assisted us in terms of our processes we've seen a, a, an increase uh, in in our timeline in terms of improved uh, start to finish uh, projects um, as a result of the, the, the willingness and openness and change in mindset of candidates and clients to work and interview online uh, as opposed to face-to-face. -face. Now, I think there is no substitute really for face-to-face -face meetings and interviews, but I think obviously with the, the, the assistance of, of uh, online platforms, um, we're able to um, have a positive impact on supporting our clients and supporting candidates in the market that are more actively looking for jobs um, and we're, we're able to Im improve our, our speed of process um, and delivery to market. I also think it makes the decision a bit quicker and easier as well. Um, you know, like Gareth spent a lot of time saying that we aren't doing as many face-to-face -face interviews straight away. Um, a lot of clients that we have are doing first interview online, second or third interview if, if the case arises where they're bringing people into the factory. I'm a bit old school when it comes to this, to be honest. Like, I, I still like doing the face-to-face. -face. I think you can't ever replace sitting down in front of someone, checking out their, their character, their emotions, their behaviours, how they deal with things. And obviously recruitment's hugely subjective, so you need that human relationship, especially if you're going to be colleagues and work together. But the process in general is much quicker and it's something that's benefited us as a recruitment company. And I'm sure it's benefited our clients as well because it's much easier to get availability for people and actually book them in for meetings. Um, and I also think that feedback's sped up as well. Yeah, um, I agree with that. I think, uh, as I say, client, client feedback and actually, uh, from, a, again, recruitment perspective, taking better quality job briefs, more more hiring managers and... HR managers, if we're speaking to them as well, uh, are much more open to a, 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 a Teams call or a, a <clears throat> Skype call. Um, and it gives us a better understanding of the job, what the client's looking for specifically. And, and that's another benefit of, of moving more towards an online um, meeting and, and platform. But uh, <clears throat> as Dan said, again, uh, having someone who's face to face you're able to look them in the eye whether it be candidate client and get a feel for that person i think there is no substitute to that so the clients that have the the, the right mix between online and face-to-face -face meetings i think have proven the most successful uh, for us in terms of retention of staff and, and hiring quality staff moving forward digitalization i would, I would call this digital digitalization of the recruitment process is probably not the only thing that we've noticed in manufacturing in particular. 
Um, I've done a few news posts in the past about how Internet of Things and 5G coming out and the lower, lower cost of automation, how that's all coming into effect. Um, there's a whole other topic we could do off of this about upskilling and automation and what kind of engineers people are looking for, but we've definitely noticed a shift in the attitudes and way of thinking towards technology. And we've actually had a few positions, which I would say are probably a crossover between IT and technology that we have here and, and the manufacturing and industrial side. Um, there's much more like real-time data that's being analyzed. Uh, you've got better PLCs, better systems in place. Um, so I think manufacturing is, there's a shift going on um, it might not be as quick as people had anticipated, but there's definitely a shift. And I think that that will change the recruitment outlook for this year. And I think the, the later on we get in the year, the more those positions are going to become technical. Yeah, I agree completely, Dan. I think that uh, for us, um, we, we had a very strong 2021. We've made a great start to 2022 as, as a team and as a company. And as I say, hopefully as the year progresses on, not just within the manufacturing industrial sector, but also obviously IT and commercial, the, the trend will remain positive um, from a recruitment perspective. So for us, we're, we're very optimistic moving forwards and uh, as I say, looking forward to hopefully breaking more records in the future. And I think that's, that's probably it from us. Our, our time's up now. Um, so feel free to interact. Like, share, comment on this post wherever you see it. I'm sure me and Gareth will be around to review what you're saying and, and potentially have discussions and feedback with you. Um, so thank you for, for listening. Thanks very much.